Hello, welcome to BioGrid TV. If you're new here, please subscribe and turn on the notification so you don't miss our next video. Biography of Jonas Malero Savimbi Jonas Malero Savimbi was born on the 3rd of August 1934 in Muhango, Bia Portuguese colonial territory, now known as the province of Moxico, Angola. His father worked as a railroad station master, also known to be a member of the Bieno group, the Ovimbundu tribe, people who later served as the stronghold of Savimbi's revolutionary struggle. He was known to be the leader of an unofficial military group. Savimbi was a brilliant boy who did well in his early school days. He attended the Roman Catholic school where he finished his secondary education, thereafter awarded scholarship to study abroad at the age of 24. He studied medicine at the University of Lisbon in Portugal and went further to obtain a doctorate degree in political science at the University of Lausanne, Switzerland in 1965. By the time he finally decided to settle home, his first mission was to attend the All-African People's Congress of Ghana in 1958 where he met big personalities, policy makers, political leaders and most importantly, an instrument of change like himself, holding Alvaro Roberto, whom he joined hands with after much persuasion from Tom Mboya and Jomo Kenyatta to champion the revolution struggle under the movement Union People of Angola in February 1961, the same year he became the Secretary General of the movement. In 1962, he played a vital role in the reformation of the Union People of Angola UPA, a merger with the Democratic Party of Angola which brought about the transformation to National Liberation Front of Angola FNLA, which started to operate from Zaire, now DR Congo. The liberation then birthed the revolutionary government of Angola in exile GRAE, which he became the foreign minister of the organization. In 1964, Savimbi alongside Antonio da Costa Fernandes conceived the idea to form a new movement to give total independence to the people of Angola far and wide. He used his position as foreign minister of the revolutionary government of Angola in exile GRAE, to sought military help in arms and training from China, which was granted. By 1966, he eventually broke ties with Roberto and the National Liberation Front of Angola FNLA movement as he officially established the National Union for the Total Independence of Angola UNITA, based in southeastern Angola whose major support came from the Ovimbundu tribe, the largest ethnic group in Angola. They fought against the Portuguese colonial rule in response to Roberto's refusal to spread the revolutionary fight beyond the traditional kingdom of Congo. Though we can't undermine the effort of the Movement for Liberation of Angola MPLA, and National Liberation Front of Angola FNLA, towards independence, but history reserves more credit to the National Union for the Total Independence of Angola UNITA group who fought painstakingly for the independence of Angola. They got support from foreign countries like China, South Africa and United States. Savimbi was definitely not a man related with slavery as he waged war against the colonial government in 1970s and the independent government between 1976 through 1980s, mid-1990s up until 2002. He was said to be the only Angolan leader known as an unofficial soldier who fought and continued to fight prior and after independence in 1975, at a time his army and supporters were numbering in thousands. After the independence struggle became a success in 1975, Savimbi's led group, National Union for the Total Independence of Angola, UNITA, 
became a nightmare to the ruling party Movement for Liberation of Angola MPLA, led by Augustino Neto and the National Liberation Front of Angola FNLA, led by Holden Roberto. Jonas Savimbi championed the civil war in Angola to oust the incumbent government which he believed was a puppet government set up by the Portuguese to still control the affairs of the country. He finally signed a peace agreement with the MPLA-led government on the 31st of May 1991 in Lisbon, Portugal. The agreement saw the end to civil war and led to a free and peaceful election in 1992. Prior to the election, in February 1992, Antonio da Costa Fernandes, the vice president, and Nzo Apuna of the National Union for the Total Independence of Angola, UNITA Party, defected, with reasons based on Savimbi's lack of interest in political tests and was accused of preparing to wage another war. Election came, but things didn't work as planned for Savimbi with 40 votes against the incumbent president, Jose Eduardo dos Santos, with 49 popular votes, which didn't meet the required 50% minimum votes to qualify a candidate for victory. Then a runoff election was scheduled towards the end of the year, although never happened due to the assassination of both the new vice president, Jeremias Chitunda, and senior advisor, Elias Salupetopena of the UNITA party on the 2nd of November, 1992. The Movement for Liberation of Angola MPLA, was further accused of murdering about 10,000 people who were members of either National Liberation Front of Angola FNLA, or National Union for the Total Independence of Angola UNITA Party. This led to another civil unrest that lasted two years. In a bid to let peace reign, President José Eduardo dos Santos offered Savimbi two options, the vice presidential position and the National Union for the Total Independence of Angola, UNITA, would be part of the government, but he declined both options on reasons best known to him. Hence, the government began to treat Jonas Savimbi as a rebel who has defiled negotiation and peace. In September 1998, Savimbi began to face opposition from within as his party, National Union for the Total Independence of Angola, began to break into factions. A faction declared itself as UNITA R, then suspended him from leadership role. The Angolan government and the Southern African Development Community recognized UNITA R as the official representative of the UNITA. Jonas Savimbi was forced to request a renewal of negotiations in March 2001 and he further indicated a willingness to accept the terms of the Lusaka Peace Accord. While at the other end, the government demanded a ceasefire as a condition for initiating new talks, Savimbi quickly involved the Roman Catholic Church to mediate the dispute as he observed he was losing from the inside due to disagreements within the party. As the fighting continued throughout 2001, which spilled into the neighboring countries of Zambia and Namibia, government troops continued to pursue Savimbi and finally caught up with him in the eastern province of Mogziko. Jonas Malero Savimbi is one of the few who has cheated death over time as he has survived series of assassinations and reported dead in a minimum count of 15 times. The man Jonas Savimbi digested 15 gunshots through the head, throat, chest and legs. He fell and never rose again at the river banks in the province of Mogziko, where he was born on the 22nd of February 2002. After Savimbi's death, a peace agreement between the National Union for the Total Independence of Angola UNITA, and the Angola government was signed in April 2002. What have we missed out of this biography of Savimbi? Let's know in the comment section. Will it be ridiculous to subscribe to our channel? If no, please like this video, 
share and subscribe to our channel.